Hi, my name is uh, Gajendra DMP. Uh, today, I'm going to take you to uh, take you through the RH033 uh, open source ideas and history. I want to take you through that, and uh, well, you might wonder. I mean, he talks about open source, and how come he's using Microsoft Office? Uh, we're not uh, OpenOffice.org here. Well, I like both of them equally but I'm more used to it on uh, no Windows uh, office and most importantly anyway I'm gonna get it for free from my office <laughs> now of course not just because of that uh, it, it has some cool features too so I'm not a just uh, I'm gonna give you a you know, neutral uh, a very neutral view of you know Linux and, uh, and uh, Linux ideas and history you know, as we're gonna go through uh, this certification. Uh, most of you are aware that you know there are a lot of you know, Linux operating system, especially Red Hat and Ubuntu. Uh, but when you wanna learn them, uh, even though they are for free, when you wanna learn them, you have to spend more money than the money that you wanna spend on an operating system that you can buy and with which you are familiar with. For example, for Windows 7 you want to buy Windows 7 you will spend some money but the money that you want to spend to learn or to go to a training <laughs> institute you know institution and uh, learn that stuff is going to be more than another uh, cost of Windows 7 so what I thought okay I mean why not I mean why not share my knowledge open source I mean open education why not so here is my attempt wish me best of luck all right so first I'm going to go through a uh, Unit 1 Linux Ideas and History and Introduction to Linux and Open Source What are the central ideas behind the Linux phenomenon and where do they come from? Okay, let's start then. Right, let's go to view. Slideshow. Okay, R033 Red Hat Linux Center Linux, Linux Essentials. Okay, let me add my name here a bit. Alright, I really don't need to know my blog and stuff anyway. <laughs> okay, so let me add the slideshow here. Uh, it's open source symbol. Okay. Open source describes practices in production and development that promote access to the end product source material, typically their source code. That is very self explanatory, right? I don't have to explain it again open source is not a practice and it is not just associated with open source software most of the people think that open source means that it is Linux or Linux open source means that it's a free software for which you don't have to pay that is completely wrong it is not just associated with it software or Linux uh, the third statement will prove that open source predates computer it's not a predator or something that like in that movie open source existed before computers but at that time open source was not known with that name open source even though it was practiced it was never called as open source and it was never considered as a movement but it was just there right so open source is an expression where it simply means that a system is available to all who wish to work on it. That means, okay, here is my source code of this software, or here is how I got this, and I'm telling you all because I don't want to, uh, you know, limit this knowledge to myself. I think that you can also benefit from it. You can use this my this idea and cultivate your own, you know. Uh, things with it. You can make your own things with it and you can sell it or you can give it for free just like me. So that open source production is a cooperative activity initiated and voluntarily undertaken by members of the public. That means whoever is using it is also contributing it or whoever is contributing is, is also using it and nobody is getting paid for you know developing something or nobody and you don't have to pay 
to use that and develop it. First one that we're going to talk about the agriculture, open source in agriculture. The example is a product called Open Cola, an idea inspired by the open source movement. Soft drink chains like you know, you know the Coke, Pepsi, you know, they have various products and they never release their formula. You know what? Why is it so famous? Of course, it is mostly because of their selling skills and uh, their brand ambassadors, celebrity ambassadors. Now, you know, volunteers have posted the recipe for a similar cola drink on the internet. The taste is said to be comparable to that of the standard beverages. I mean, that is good. Beer. A beer recipe called Wars. The beer was created by students in the IT University in Copenhagen. I'm sure you know you might have heard about Budweiser. I mean I'm a non alcoholic, but I'm just saying or knockout or something. We always wondered you know why they are better than others because there is a recipe and which they have tested, tasted and proven. But they never uh, give out this recipe. Probably someone can make better make it better you know with I adding some ideas to the existing idea but they never give out that because that might harm their interests but here they did something called as open beer I mean they gave this recipe I mean it's not a big thing but I'm just you know giving you an idea because we have to go with a small thing right from small to big so now coffee it has been pointed out that capsule based beverage systems such as Nestle's uh, an espresso or Krups Tassimo turn home brewed coffee from an inherently open source beverage into a product limited by the specific range of capsules made available by the system manufacturers. What do you say to that? <laughs> Second one content. Sites such as Wikipedia and Wiktionary, which of course don't need any introduction, uh, have embraced the open content, GFTL and uh, Creative Commons uh, content licenses. These licenses were designed to adhere to principles similar to various open source software development licenses. Many of these licenses ensure that content remains free for reuse, that source documents are made readily available. Basically it means that anybody can write an article in Wikipedia or Wiktionary uh, and anybody can contribute and someone else thinks that okay, they can add something to it, they can add to it and someone else thinks that okay that is not right I mean that has been changed that is old stuff here is the new stuff they can add it they can add pictures whatever they want as okay and they don't have to take the permission of the original owner of that article or the author health and science pharmaceuticals uh, there have been several proposals for open source pharmaceutical development which is actually really hard to happen in reality even though that is the most uh, needed thing in this you know in these days at least which led to the estab of course which led to the establishment of the tropical disease initiative there are also a number of not for profit virtual pharma such as the institute for one world health and the drugs for neglected diseases initiative so uh, these are you know, some of the very 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 small maybe unknown movements right which are you know who are trying to give away or let people know that okay these are the these are, these are the cures this is how you can cure and these are the formulas that you can use whereas in you know, big companies what they do is they discover something or they in uh, they create a formula for a disease and if it's effective they increase the price of it and they make a lot of money from it so of course they have to survive and they have to do it but yes open source contradicts in some ways however if you see the big picture it is actually saying that okay, anyone can contribute anyone can use so no restrictions free world freedom fourth one is science research the science commons was created as an alternative to the expensive legal costs of sharing and reusing scientific works in journals etc. Well, that is self-explanatory anyway. Technology, computer software, which I don't have to actually introduce. Open source software, 
software whose so 